throughout the month of December, we have been talking about trusting God for the right partner. Okay, and this is very important because um, there is there is there is the extent to which you can go in your human thinking and calculations, and then there is the extent to which you need to depend on the guidance of the Spirit of God. You need to trust God to lead you. That's what we're saying because. Um, you see, everything you see in the earth, everything that, that you can relate with is first spiritual before it is physical. Okay, you first existed as spirit before you were born as a physical human being. Okay, God first made the spirit of man before he formed man out of the dust. All right, so everything is first spiritual before it is physical. So you need to also understand spiritual dimensions in everything you're doing. Okay, and not just the physical one. So we've spent a lot of time telling you to look out for this, learn this skill, improve yourself like this, do this and do that. But what we're saying in this last month of December is with all of that, it is important that you know how to be led by God. It's important you understand that there is also a God factor in getting a life partner. And that is very important. Now, um, okay, let me do a quick recap of what we looked at last week before I go straight to what we're talking about for today. So um, last week, there's some points I shared. The summary of what we did last week was, was, was me reminding you that you don't have to worry. You don't have to worry. We looked through a number of scriptures where, where, where God, Jesus shared, you know, with his disciples or with us by extension that we don't have to worry. He said, look at the grasses on the field. Look at the animals. Look at the birds of the air. Okay. They don't work like you do, but God takes care of them. And if God can take care of them, how much more you who are his own children? Do you understand? We also took time to show you from creation how that, you know, God put man to rest and then he formed the woman, okay, from the man. He took the woman out of him from his rib and then formed that rib into a woman. And I shared something with you that some of you have not learned to relax and let God lead in your lives. You think you are the pilots, as it were, of your life and then you want to take charge and run things. You know, um, so let God lead, learn to relax, learn to, you know, go to rest on certain issues and let God show you his wonders. Let him show you his faithfulness. When God wanted to move on behalf of the children of Israel, one of the things he told Moses was stand still and see the wonders, the, the, the signs, the power of God manifested. Stand still. In other words, wait. There are things you will do, but there are other things I do and you need to allow me to do the ones that I do so that you can see my power at work in your life. So that word is for somebody today. Learn to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Stand still and see the power of God at work in your life. And concerning this matter of relationship and marriage, somebody here needs to learn that, see, enough of the worries. Drop your worries aside and rely on the faithfulness of God to meet you at that point of your need. God is that faithful, he is that loving, he cares that much, and he wants to even blow your mind more than you can ask or think. That's what scripture says, that God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think. Okay, so whether you are asking it literally or you're just imagining it, God is able to even blow your mind. That is the summary of that verse. So I want you to be relaxed, okay? And then um, we said that if you're, you know, I shared some points for, for those who are um, under 25, there are like seven things I said they should do. Um, in today's session, I'll speak to those who are over um, 25. All right. Um, so a number of things I said you should do um, while you are resting on God, while you're trusting on God for those who are below 25. You know, I said one, I said, delight yourself in the Lord. Genuinely seek to love God and to grow in his knowledge daily. This will help you. It will build your confidence in relating with God. It will help, help you also know how to recognize God's voice so that when God is speaking to you, you know that, yes, this one is God. It's not my feelings. It's not my emotions. I also said people should learn to serve, learn to volunteer, learn to, you know, to do things that are of service to other people. If you don't know how to serve as a human, as a person, you would have problems. You would struggle in your relationship and marriage because marriage is all about service. It's all about serving your spouse. It's all about serving your family, whether as a male or as a female. Okay, you have to serve your spouse. If you can't learn how to serve now, you will struggle 
in marriage because marriage is about service. I said, learn to serve, learn to volunteer. Okay, not every time you're telling people, do you know who I am? Do you know my position? Every time you're waiting for other people to do things for you. There are people like that. They never do things for others unless they're going to be paid or rewarded for it. But no, learn to serve, learn to volunteer yourself. You know, when there's an opportunity for service, it will teach you humility, it will teach you tolerance, it will teach you people's skill, patience, you know, and all of these will help you serve your spouse in the future. Then I said, start learning about marriage. Read books, buy courses, attend seminars, learn, 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 learn. The fourth point I said, identify a marriage mentor and submit to them. Let them mentor you. Let them guide you. Let them be like accountability partners to you. Learn from other people who are successful in that area where you're trying to get into. Okay. And then I said, be committed to your own vision, your assignment, your work, your business. Don't sit down there and be saying, God, give me a husband or God, give me a wife. I am not doing anything. Be committed to what God has placed in your heart, the assignment God has given you, be committed to it so that, you know, your spouse can meet you, you know, in the cause of your assignment, in the cause of your vision, in the cause of you being busy doing what God has called you to do on earth. Okay, and then finally, was that the final one? No, the sixth point I said, keep building capacity in yourself. I said that every way you improve yourself will be a blessing to your spouse. Okay, in whatever area, whether it's, Building capacity for success in life, building capacity for patience, for tolerance, you know, for hard work, for long suffering. Keep building capacity. All of these will help you on the long run. Then uh, the last, the final point I said was keep praying for your spouse and your future family. Okay. If left to me, I personally teach that once you're of age 15, you should already start seriously preparing for marriage. Okay. I'm not saying you should look for a life partner. I'm saying you should get knowledge and information about marriage and how it works. Start as early as possible. Okay. So you can as well start praying for your spouse and your family. That said, all of that was done um, last week and um, it was needful to just do that reiteration. So let me go into the conversations for today. Today, I will speak to those who are over 25, whether male or female, okay? Because I know that at that level, the worry tends to kick in at a different um, level, okay? Um, whoa. So, there's a scripture that I just thought to share with you. In Proverbs chapter 20, verse 24, the Bible says, A person's steps are directed by the Lord. How then can anyone understand their own way? Okay, I'll say it again. A person's steps are directed by the Lord. How then can anyone understand their own way? Now, listen, when you understand that your life, you know, is your life is in God's hands, you know, God is involved in the in the affairs of your life, especially if you're a Christian, one who submits to the Lordship of Christ and to, to the will of God in your life. If you have that understanding, then listen, it should give you peace. Why? Because God is not unaware of the activities and the happenings in your life. Okay? In fact, let me tell you, one of the major reasons why you should allow God lead you to your partner, one of the major reasons is this. God has gone ahead of you. God knows what you don't know. He sees what you don't see. Somebody may be good for you today and bad for you tomorrow. Okay? God sees that tomorrow. You don't see it. Okay, if you want to take important life decisions just based on your senses, okay, you are prone to making mistakes because at the time of your processing it, at the time, at the level of your intelligence and at the level of your human wisdom and with all the analysis and all the, you know, sophisticated calculations you want to put into it, okay, there are still areas that are blind to you. You don't know what will happen tomorrow. You do not know. But you see, God lives in that tomorrow. He knows what will happen. He knows those who may not be trying today, but tomorrow will pick up. He knows those who look like great guys today, but tomorrow they'll be broke. He knows those who are rich guys today, but tomorrow they'll be in prison because of fraud or stuff like that. He knows all of that. Okay? You cannot depend only on your wisdom and intellect when preparing for marriage. You need to trust God. Why? Because he has gone ahead of you in the matters of your life. Okay, now I'm saying this because there are people that God will bring to you sometimes and the only reason you would shut them out and not consider them is because they don't seem to fit the kind of pictures you have created for yourself, you know, aka your spec. In fact, one of the sub-themes I wanted to give today's session, if I had finished 
um, the things I wanted to share last week. What I wanted to talk on today is the fact that your spec is your problem. Your spec is your problem. Yeah, I know it might not be the only challenge you have, but I, I'm just putting it out there because I believe it will speak to somebody directly. Okay. Some of you have so customized the kind of spouse you want to the last detail. Listen, listen and listen good. You are not the owner of your life. You don't know what's best for you. You think you know what's best for you, but take it from me, you don't. All right. And if you would agree with me, at different points in your life, different things you have wanted have changed per time. Think about it from childhood. What were the things that were important to you? When you grew a little bit older, some of those things changed. Maybe at some point you just wanted to play with toys and just be careless and just, you know, eat, sleep, play. But at some point, life began to give you more responsibility. The things you liked changed from probably toys to now cartoons and then now you could run some errands. Now when you misbehave, they spank you in the house and they shout at you and you cry and they tell you, shut up your mouth. If I hear Pim, you will hear me and her. You know that thing. You see, so... With time, life starts changing towards you and the things you like, your interests and all of those things begin to change. Very soon you get up to a teenager and you discover that you're now able to take decisions for yourself. You're now able to go places by yourself. You're now able to, to meet your own friends, form your own associations, have your own opinions and stuff like that. You see, at that point, the kind of TV programs you like to watch will also begin to change. Your interests also begin to change. You see, you get into the university and then meeting new people, new environment, and all of that, your interest again began to change. There are people who said as children, oh, I want to be a doctor. When they got to secondary school, it switched to, oh, I want to be an engineer. When they got to university, they saw that, first of all, they didn't even get admission for doctor or engineer. What they got admission for was uh, history, law. Do you understand? So, it changes. You know, right now, you're studying a particular course, you know, you're thinking, oh, I'm going to use this when I get out there. When you get out there, you find a new area, and guess what? You you fall in love with that area, you start learning more about it, and before you know it, you find your passions there, and you're switching from that which you studied to something entirely different. What am I just trying to establish? That things that you think you like, things that you think you know about yourself can change per time, okay? There are many people today who studied engineering, and they're working in bank as operations, working in bank as marketing. Do you understand? Um, there are so many of these kind of changes. So, the, so all I'm just saying is you don't know what tomorrow holds. Uh -huh. Somebody even said, today you want to study medicine, but after uni, you now sell wigs on Instagram. You follow. It happens. Do you understand? So my point is, what you say you like today, it can change tomorrow. At some point in your life, you may think that, oh, I just like guys that are tall and dark. Until tall and dark, with two hands inside your eye and almost remove your eye. Then you say, ah, oh, God forbid, anything tall and dark, I don't want. It's just what I'm saying. You see, so today you think you know what you want, but tomorrow you discover that even that thing you think you want can change. And that is the reason you need to rely on God to lead you. Because he knows the one that will fit the different changes in your life and will remain constant or will change with you, both of you together, towards the person that you are made to become. Do you understand this? So that is why you should trust God for your life partner. That is why ultimately, beyond all of the things that I teach and I share with you, I need you to know that you need to learn how to receive from God. You need to train your spirit to be sensitive to the things of God. And then, and then, and then, um, um, how, how can you go about this? All right. Um, some of the things I shared last week and the week before was in you learning to delight yourself in the things of God. I cannot overemphasize that principle. You need to learn to love the Lord. Okay, God is your father. God is not a judge out there who is not involved in your life, who wants to destroy you. God is your father and a loving father at that. All right? He's a loving father. As a matter of fact, in, in Matthew chapter 7, um, I think it's verse 10, where he said that um, you as, earthly, as fathers, if your son asks you for bread, will you give him stone? You know, if he asks you for fish, will you give him scorpion? He says, if you who are earthly people, who are humans, and you know, you are in your in your humanity, you 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 are you I mean if I let me just read it, let me not paraphrase it. In Matthew 7, verse 10, he says, Or what man is there among you if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone, or if he asks for fish, will give him a serpent. If you then being evil, all right, 
know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will your heavenly father give good things to those who ask him? You see, so if you as humans know how to do good, how much more do you think God, your father, is willing and able to do good things for you? All right, so like I said, you don't know what tomorrow holds. That person you think is a great guy today might disappoint you tomorrow. That is why ultimately, beyond any indicators you're looking at or any scrutiny you're doing, you need to learn to trust God. You need to learn to be led by the Spirit of God. And the concept of being led by the Spirit of God is not a super spiritual concept. It's not a spooky thing. All I'm just saying is you need to learn how to recognize the language and the Word of God. Okay, and how do you recognize it? It's by inclining your ears, inclining your heart to him. Okay? Yeah, my God is too faithful. Exactly. You need to, in fact, I'm coming to the point very soon where you have to share these affirmations with yourself. Thank you, favored E, for sharing that. Yeah, so much love from Tanzania. I see you. All right? Yeah, so God is too faithful. You need to know that. And you need to trust in him. You see, it bothers me how that when you want to travel, you will pray, ah, God, give me safety, or yeah, you will pray against uh, any kind of accident, any kind of disturbance, let the journey be smooth. You will pray for that because you know they you handle. You know you're not in control, you're not in charge, you know. But when it comes to relationship, you believe you are the one in charge, and you are the one who should take all the decisions, and then you leave God out of it. You see, in fact, many people would rather talk to their friends and their contemporaries and leave God out of it. No. You need to hear how he speaks to you. You need to know how he speaks to you. And you need to learn this even before you start preparing for marriage. Okay? But the challenge is there are people who don't have time for God. They don't want to spend time with him. They don't want to know anything about God. They just live life their own way, do exactly what they want. Then when it's time for marriage, they start saying, oh, yeah, God, come and tell me who I should marry. In fact, some will be giving God instructions. God, if he's the one I should marry, let rain fall today. If he's not the one I should marry, let me see a woman carrying a yellow umbrella. You know, if he's the one, let my father call me today and ask me, how are you? Let him not say anything. Let him just say, how are you? You know, people begin to give God all manner of uh, uh, signs and uh, instructions on how to prove to them that He's the one leading them. And I told somebody, uh, I mean, I, I tell people all the time, it doesn't always work that way. It doesn't. In fact, somebody I was sharing this with also reiterated the same thing, reiterated his story. I can't even remember who it was, but shared he, their experience with me. How that, um, so the person said, okay, God, if I'm to do this thing today, let this sign happen. Maybe the sign was let rain fall. And then truly rain fell. And he said, oh, wow, that's a sign. Oh, ha. But if I'm sure that uh, it's really God that wants me to do this thing, um, let me, immediately I go outside, let me see somebody with a red shirt. And then you went outside and for 20 minutes, one hour, you did not see anybody with a red shirt. You see, you just be confusing yourself because now you think, ah, it's God. Then later, ah, it's not God. Because you are depending on every other thing. You are depending on science. You are depending on, no, that's not what you need to depend on. That's not how to prepare for marriage. You say, you tell somebody, go and pray for me, see for me, uh, uh, what, what is God saying to you about me? No, that's not how to do it. You need to learn how to recognize the voice of God for yourself. Okay? And he leads you, the characteristic way God leads you is with peace in your heart concerning a particular matter. Okay? You'll find leadership from his word and then that peace in your heart. You know, the spirit of God will witness that peace. He will tell you, take this decision. You know, you might not have all the... Um, reasons why it's the right decision, but you will feel some level of comfort and strength in that decision. And you will stay there and you keep watching it. And before you know it, it happens to be the best decision. All right. Now, this is just for people who have not really recognized how to hear God speak. And listen to me. God desires to speak to you. God wants to commune with you. The Bible says from the beginning when God made man, he will come every evening to commune with man. He wants to fellowship with you. God wants to share things. Listen, listen. he wants to share things. He wants to show you about yourself. He wants to show you your life. He wants to show you the plans he has for you. If you can trust him enough to listen to him and, you know, listen and learn how he speaks, you will be amazed the kind of things God wants to show you about your life. 
What if you are there wondering, I want to get married now, I want to get married right now, right now. My goal in life is to get married before I am 26. Oh Lord God of heaven, move by fire. Bring my husband by fire before I'm 26. I don't want 26 to meet me. And what if by the time God is showing you certain things, you begin to see that even at 26, you have not even stepped into that path of what he really wants you to be doing. And he wants you to find that first and do it for like two, three years. And then somewhere down the line, you'll find your spouse who would also compliment you on that path. You see, these are the things about the future that you don't know. And instead of trying to find out and let God lead you, you shut God out of it and then you just focus on your worry, focus on your intelligence and your human limitations and you start trying to work it out by yourself. And like I tell people, it's not by going to O and B, going to parties and wedding ceremonies. It's not by looking for the churches that have the rich people and where you see the big cars and you see the big boys it's not by doing some of those things now those are you know those are tips that sometimes you share with people and say yeah if you know if you're you know you're looking for a partner go to where you can meet your kind of people yes that happens but beyond all of that you need to understand that the real leading you're looking for is from inside, it's from within. You are led by the Spirit of God. There are several people who have met their husbands and their wives in ways and in places that they could not have calculated it. It just happened and they knew that this was it. There are several like that. Do you understand? So don't wait for, don't wait. Some of you are looking for that, that Instagram story. You're looking for that story that, ah, when I will share my love story, ah, everybody will say, wow, what is wrong with you? What exactly is your focus? Do you want to get married or do you want people to be telling you, wow, 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 what is wow? What are you doing with wow? Does it put money in your pocket? Does it put peace in your home? You see, a lot of people have their priorities really wrong. And, and, and I'm, I'm really concerned for this generation because many people have their priorities determined by what goes on online, determined by the standards of social media, determined by the standards of other people. And you know what? That is very misleading because nobody puts their, their real selves out there. They put the best version of themselves out there. Some people take 25 pictures and post only two, the two that they think are the best. You see, and then you see those two, you say, oh, what a life. You say, God, when? You see, but you don't know the real issues that are going on. So what am I even saying with all of this? In learning, in delighting yourself in the Lord, you would learn how God speaks to you. And it will be in the little ways, in the little things. There are certain things God will tell you to do. You know, you will do it. You will have a witness in your spirit that, oh, that was cool. You know, for example, sometimes he's telling you, maybe you're in a public transport system, you know, and he's telling you to, to pay the fares for somebody who just stepped in. Or you're walking out of the grocery store and he's saying, hey, see that man there? Give him something. Bless him. And you're like, I beg, go. I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg. I don't have time for anybody. Uh, with the money I have is even enough for myself. You know, and you're, you're moving straight face. It's some of those little things. Sometimes, sometimes it's just even the little things as take up your phone and call so, so, so person. Check up on so, so person. Ask them how they are doing. Tell them it is well with their soul. Do you understand? Sometimes it's those little prompts. Okay, you need to learn how to act on those little prompts. You need to learn it. You need to learn, how, <laughs> let me say this, you need to learn how to take up your phone and do a transfer to somebody without the person asking you, simply because you just feel led to drop this in this person's account. Somebody sings in church and it's a blessing to you. Sometimes you need to learn how to tell them, you know what, I'm just calm, I'm, can you give me your account, I want to bless you. Okay, why? Because in recognizing some of these little prompts of the Spirit of God leading you to do things, that is how you will gain the mastery and confidence to recognize his voice when he's telling you the bigger things, especially about marriage. You see? Yeah, so you need to start learning to obey the promptings of the Spirit over the little things in your life, the little details. You're going out, you want to wear palm slippers, and you just feel a nudge saying, no, wear shoe. Go back and wear the shoe. I remember the first job I got in Lagos, you know, um, after series of interviews and applications left, right, center, if I got this one, it was even for a role I did not care about in a company I did not apply to. I don't even know how they got my CV and then they invited me for an interview for one useless role in my mind. And I was just going to put on just a t-shirt and trouser. I had already dressed up. The Spirit of God told me, no, Chairman, is it dressed properly? If you're going there at all, go in your full element. Those were his words. Go in your full element. I said, ah, uh ah. -uh. Oh yeah now, so I went, got my best suit, polished my shoe, I was looking dapper. That was how I got there, interviewed for the role of a service clerk, 
left with a job of the manager of the biggest um, branch of that company? What if I didn't go in my best element? What if I say, after all, it's one silly road they're calling me for? Yeah, I beg, I'm not interested in all this. And then I just ignore the leading that says, no, if you're going at all, go in your full element. Dress properly. What if I ignore that? You see, it's the little things. You need to recognize those voices. You see, I went there interviewing for a service rep role and I left with a manager role with an official apartment, with an official car, you know, and weekly allowances. I mean, you don't, you don't plan those things into being. You have to be led to enjoy some of those kind of things. You see, so that's what I'm just saying. Let you recognize those promptings, those little promptings. Pay attention to them. You want to wear that light t-shirt. He says, wear a jacket. You don't know why. Just take the jacket and wear it. Along the line, you discover that you thought you were just going for an evening stroll, but an evening stroll became something that landed you in the office of the governor. And now you have to make a presentation. What if you were looking shabby? You see, so you need, to, you need to understand that when the Spirit of God is leading you in some of these ways, you need to recognize it. There are many people who are full of regrets. Ah, something told me, oh, hey, and one voice was telling me, one mind was telling me, see, you have not recognized how the Spirit of God is leading you. Eh? When you start learning how to listen to that one voice, one mind, with time, you discover that this one voice, one mind has never led me astray. Let me pay attention to it. Perhaps that's how God leads me. You see? So you need to pay attention to those prompts. I cannot overemphasize this enough because it is these little things that will teach you to recognize the voice of God when it matters most. When it matters most. I have one of my pastors in my life who at the, after secondary school, where I mean, everybody's getting into the university, everybody's, you know, where, where are you now? You know, those are the questions. God told him clearly, forget about higher institution, stay and build by people. He was a pastor, okay? It was not a popular kind of instruction but he obeyed it he stayed he didn't get into the university till 12 years after then but then you look at his life today there is nothing that speaks of somebody who did not go to school when everybody was there's nothing like in fact it's, it's completely insignificant but the lives that have been built in those 12 years are doing wonders all over the world you see so you need to learn how to recognize the the leading of god's spirit because at the end of the day that is what you need Okay, but there are some of you that you, you are pursuing this girl. The Spirit of God will tell you, leave her alone. You will say, no way, I will die dead. In fact, the Spirit of God will tell you, stop. You say, I rebuke you, Spirit of God. You see, because you have refused to recognize how he leads you, how he speaks to you. Okay, the same thing. <laughs> I can give you several examples like this. Okay, you see somebody, you just say, ah, this is exactly what I want. Everything in you is saying, no, stay away, stay away, stay away. Don't go there. Don't call him. It's a lie. You pick your phone, you will call him. Don't call her. No way. You pick your phone, you will call her. Don't send that message. You will send it. You know, you just go ahead to deliberately disobey the promptings of the spirit. And then at the end of the day, you're there praying, God, why? God, why? Do something. But all the leadings he has been giving you, you ignored all of them. You see? So you need to really learn to be led by the Spirit of God, in the little things first, you know, so that you can recognize His voice in the big things. Um, let me not overshoot that point, okay? So, um, a number of things I said I was going to share with um, uh, people who are over 25, okay? I've said the first one, which is to incline your heart to the things of God. Let God lead you, okay? Start practicing, start rehearsing how to recognize His voice. That's one. The second point I want to say is, Allow God to work on you. Let me say it again. Allow God to work on you. There are some of you who know by yourself that there are certain habits you have that are very destructive. There are certain habits you have that have been putting you in trouble time and time again. There are certain habits you have that have made you repulsive to people. You have met people who under normal circumstances, you believe this one was supposed to be my life partner. But those qualities in your life put that person off. You know this. I'm not talking about something that is alien to you. You know exactly what I'm talking about. And you have refused to let go, to face it squarely and treat it as the enemy that it is in your life. Listen, you have to let God work on you. 
it might not be an interesting experience because it's going to it's going to deal with your pride it's going to deal with your vulnerabilities okay but you need to allow god to work on you listen the bible says that when god took the rib out of adam he went and formed it into the woman that he presented to man you need to allow god work on you let him form you into the kind of person he wants you to be some of us hold on too tightly to our beliefs to our habits we hold on too tightly and we know that these things don't work for us i've heard people say to me in counseling a number of times oh this my mouth is always putting me in trouble submit your mouth to god let him work on your mouth let him help you to stop saying the wrong things. Let him help you to learn how to be disciplined in your in your speech. Let him help you to learn how to how to season your conversation with grace. You say, I, I, my problem is my temper. Before you say one, I will say five. And if you continue, I will, I will, I will know when my hand will move and I'll give you a slap. I'll give you a punch. And it has cost you your relationships. Some of it has even cost people... <laughs> I know people who will be angry with their boss and say, today, I know, I know I will lose my job today, but I must beat my boss. No problem. Go and beat your boss. You will lose your job. And they will make a comment when you are losing that job. And almost anywhere you go to and they are asking where you have worked before, they will say, ah, that person is a boss beater or unless you are ready for somebody to give you a punch. Please don't employ this one. And before you know it, you start wondering, why is my life going the way it is? It's because of a bad habit that you did not allow God to work on. Yeah, Monty Berry, yeah, that's the way I am. And there's nothing I can do about it. That's a very popular saying. That's just the way I am. Listen, if people have given you feedback that something you are doing consistently or something you do all the time doesn't work or is not good or is not the best of behaviors, listen, humble yourself, take that feedback. Don't get angry about it. That's what so many people do. You get feedback and then you get angry. Don't get angry. Take that feedback and find a way to Make it better. Find a way to do the right thing. There's nothing like that. It's just the way I am. If the way you are keeps putting you in trouble, would you allow yourself to remain like that and, and keep getting into trouble? You shouldn't do that. Okay? So, there's nothing like that's the way I am, especially when it's for negative um, characteristics, negative habits, negative behaviors. Okay? Allow God prone you. So be humble enough. Submit yourself. You know, it's a case of, it's a case of God. Help me. Help me. I have struggled too much. I can't take it anymore. Help me. Some of you, your problem is lost. Lostfulness. You will have girlfriend. You can't, you will be pursuing every other thing you see on sketch. Tell yourself, Lord, I submit myself for pruning. Help me deal with this lust. For some people, it's infidelity raised to power 10. You cannot stay one place. Submit yourself for pruning. Let God work on you. Let God work on you. I, there are some ladies, once you see fine boy, you, you lose it. You lose all the principles in your life. You lose all the... Once fine boy, is that's your password. Anything you want. Just so that you are fine boy, go do okay. Tell the Lord to begin to work on you. Some of it is unforgiveness. They do you something today, you hold it for five years. Come on. You need to allow the Lord to work on you. Okay, so of you is pride. That kind of pride that can never say, I'm sorry. Never. You know, allow the Lord to work on you. Some of these things I'm saying are things that I see a lot in young people. You know, it will not reduce you. You will not die if you allow God to make you into a better person. Instead, your life will become more beautiful. You see? So, when you identify that thing, you know by yourself, some of you say, your real problem, your, some people, eh? your problem is money. Let money enter your hand, you become useless. You just become useless. It's, it's all these stupid things in life that you're thinking of doing. You want to drink drinks that you have not drank before, the ones that have 45% alcohol, you want to see what 60% looks like, you want to mix all the drinks. I mean, just because you can afford it. You see? There are people like that. Money is their biggest problem. You give them money today, they make all these stupid decisions. They buy things they don't need to impress people who will not notice, you know, and they just do stupid things, foolish decisions. If you are that kind of person, it's about time you sit down beside yourself and identify that area. The Bible speaks about us setting aside that sin which does so easily beset us and let us run the race with perseverance. 
Okay, it's about time you sit down and ask yourself, what is that thing that doesn't work for me? What is that behavior of mine that is my major weakness? What is that area of my life that needs to change? You need to look at that thing, okay? Now, I'm not saying that that is the singular reason, perhaps, why you're not yet married. But I'm just saying, submit yourself to the Lord for pruning. Let him work on you. Let him show you the areas you need to improve. Let him help you become a better person. Stop trying to be wise in your own eyes. Stop trying to be smart in your own eyes. Stop trying to be Lord and master of yourself. Okay? Let the Lord work on you. I've hit that point enough. Let me move on to the next point. Now, the next point, you know, is you need to get rid of your negative beliefs. Listen, this is one major area where God cannot do anything in your life. You heard me. An area where God cannot do anything in your life is the area where you where where your is the area of your beliefs. Let me put it like that. The Bible says Jesus Christ could not perform, could not. The Son of God could not. It's not that he did not. He could not perform miracles there because of their unbelief. That is one area that shuts out the workings of God in your life, what you have believed. And that's very serious. What do you believe about marriage? You are praying, God, give me a husband. Oh, I want a God-fearing husband. But what you are confessing every day is that all men are useless. All men are the same. All men are dogs. All men are cheats. And then you are saying, God, give me a husband. Can't you see that what you are saying and what you believe are inconsistent? How do you think you will get the kind of husband you are praying for when you don't even believe that he exists? So what are those beliefs in your heart? What are those things that you are holding on to? You need to begin to audit those beliefs. I think there's a session where I talked about this. Okay, yeah, um, sometime in November. I said you need to audit your beliefs about marriage. Where did you even get those beliefs from? You need to check it because that can be a major stronghold in your life. You say there are no good women out there anymore. Yet you are praying for wife. You are praying for a good wife. But you are saying because you believe that there are no good girls out there anymore. How would you get the good woman you're praying for? You say, ah, all men want is to just sleep with me and move on. That is what you are saying. And then you are saying at the same time, ah, God, give me a man that, that will marry me. But what you are believing to yourself is that all that men want from me is just to sleep with me. Why are you getting that? Because the number of people around you are always asking, out, asking you out, I mean, rather, you know, making advances towards your body. That does not mean that that's what all the men in the world want. So you see, you might need to start looking at those beliefs because those beliefs to a large extent are holding you hostage in your life. Marriage is difficult. You believe that marriage is difficult, but you are praying for sweet marriage and easy marriage. But what you really believe is that it is difficult. And it shows in the kind of conversations you have. It shows in the kind of messages you... You know, the, the, see, it's not every breaking news that you need to read or you need to listen to. This word is for somebody. It's not every break. Some of you pick up your phones and what you're looking for is breakup stories. Breakup stories. Celebrity breakup. That's what you're looking for. You're looking for gossip of failed marriages and you're praying to not have a failed marriage. What are you doing? Don't you know it is what you feel your heart in that you're attracting to your life? If you want your marriage to work, be looking for the pictures and videos of beautiful marriages. That's how it works. Fill your heart with that. When Jacob was going to produce his own settlement from Laban. Laban took all of the sheep that had um, that had speckles or stripes on them and told Jacob that, okay, the ones that will, when, when this when these sheep are giving birth, okay, anyone that has stripes on them will be yours. The ones that are plain will be mine. After saying that kind of thing, instead of leaving them to crossbreed, he removed all the speckled ones and left only the plain-bodied ones. How? Was, 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 was Jacob supposed to achieve having um, the lambs that are speckled? But what happened? God gave him wisdom and he cut a, a, a portion of, you know, a stem and then carved it such that some parts were skin, some parts were the bark, okay? And he put it in the place where they go to feed. That's a life principle. What happened was that every time those animals were feeding and looking at that image, it was forming impressions on their inside and they didn't know. When the plain-bodied animals looked upon that image and went to mate, they gave birth to animals that were speckled. How? 
because they had focused on it. They had taken it inside. It had formed impressions in their spirit. Every time they saw it, it was registering there. When it was time to reproduce, that was exactly what they reproduced. And Laban was shocked. It's a life principle. What you pay attention to is what manifests in your life. What you pay attention to is what manifests in your life. What you pay attention to is what increases. Okay? So, if you say you want a successful marriage, stop looking for all the breakup story. If you see breakup story, jump and pass. Swipe to the next story. Don't be looking for it. It's not, it's not every breaking news that is for you. Look for the things that speak to exactly what you want. Look for things that build faith and inspire you towards what you want. Enough of just living your life like, like, like everything is just acceptable to you. No, you have to be more deliberate. That's how to make progress in life. You have to be more deliberate. You just have to be more deliberate about the things that you're allowing into your life. Okay? Um, so, there are all manner of, of wrong beliefs. They say, fear woman, fear man. Ah, you know, those kind of things they say. You, you, need to, you, need to, you need to throw away those wrong beliefs from your mind because it's possible that those are the same things that are holding you back from having a lovely uh, from finding your life partner okay sometimes it's not even all those negative things it's just the belief that my husband must be fair he must be tall ah my wife must have figure eight what if she does what if what if last last she will not have figure eight <laughs> i don't like this kind of women i don't like people from this tribe all of those things are holding you back you need to trust god listen you need to trust god God can give you a beautiful gift from a place where, I mean, I mean, I mean, look at Jesus. They said, can anything good come out of Bethlehem? But that's where God chose to, to give birth to Jesus. You see? Can anything good? So you might be there saying, can anything good come out of Yoruba men? Jesus can come out of there. Can anything good come out of Igbo men? Jesus can come out of there. Can anything good come out of Edo ladies? Jesus can come out of there. Can anything good... Listen, stop limiting yourself. Stop limiting yourself to any religion, to any... I mean, not religion, no, please. Religion is important. To any any color, any complexion, any tribe, any... No, 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 no. Stop limiting yourself. Stop limiting yourself. Let God lead you. Okay, let me move on so that I can conclude this today. This fifth point is very important. And this, this, this is something you should do daily. The fifth point is be grateful for the things that are working in your life. I cannot overemphasize this. Be grateful for the things that are working in your life. Yes, you don't have a wife, but you have a great job. Be grateful. You don't have a wife, but you have a loving family. Be grateful. You don't have a wife yet, okay? But you just got a promotion. Something you've been you've been longing for just happened. A, 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 you know, um, you've been praying for healing for your father, or your mother. You got that. Be grateful for the things that are working in your life. Why? Because one of the things the devil does is to distract you to focus on the things you don't have yet, so that you stay in worry and anxiety. And take note: worry and anxiety is lack of faith, and anything that is not done in faith is sin. So the devil wants to keep you in the scene of doubt. Okay, so that you take your eyes off the possibilities of what God can do for you and you rather focus on what you have not received yet. When you do that, you delay your blessings because what you are focusing on is not on his goodness and his kindness. Don't forget what I shared earlier, that what you focus on, you attract. Okay, when you focus on his goodness, when you focus on his blessings, you attract more of them. When you focus on what is not working in your life, you're attracting worry, you're attracting doubt, okay, anxiety, and at the end of the day, that is what you would get. Okay, so you need to be grateful for the things that are working. And why am I saying that? Because... The God that blessed you with a job, is he now unable to bless you with a spouse? The God that healed your father or your mother of that sickness, is he unable to bless you with a spouse? The God that took you off the hospital bed, is he unable to give you a loving spouse? Do you understand what I'm saying? If God could do A, B, C, he can do DEF up to Z in your life. So remind yourself of that. Ah, it's just, it's just life partner. Oh, it's just life partner. Hold on. What about the other things that are working? 
What about the accident he delivered you from? What about the new car he blessed you with? What about the promotion he gave your brother and your sister? What about the things he's doing for the people around you? What about all the things that are working for you? What about all of that? You say, ah, it's, all, it's only just, just wife I want to go. Just wife. If you don't give me wife. Wife. That's all I need. Wife. No problem. But please... Remember all the other things that he has done. In Psalm 105, the Bible says, Give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known among the Gentiles what he has done. Sing praise to him. Sing praises to him. Tell of all his wonderful acts. You need to talk about it. Oh, God is good to me. Oh, he healed me. Oh, I was broke and he provided. Oh, I needed this and he made it happen. You need to stay on those ones. Why? Because the same God who did those things in your life, he is able to bring your spouse to you. Let me move on. All right. This is a very, very important point. Very important point. Be grateful for the things that are working. Very important. Okay. Because the God that blessed you with those is not ignorant of the other things you need. Okay. The, the, the sixth point I will share here is that know that God has made provision for you. God has made provision for you. And, and, the story I like to share here from scripture, the story I love to share the most is when Elijah had successfully killed all the prophets of Baal in first, first Kings chapter 19, 19. After he had killed all the prophets of Baal, you know, destroyed everybody, you know, charged with power and, and, and you know, the manifestation of, of God's power in his life. The Bible says Jezebel said that, who is that man? I will kill that man by tomorrow. Now, the same Elijah who saw the power of God, who saw fire come down from heaven and consume the sacrifice, who slew over 450 um, prophets of Baal, the same Elijah heard a threat from Jezebel and ran away. I started telling God, Ah, God, I am the only one left. In fact, just come and kill me. Because this woman, her problem is too much. Come and kill me before she will catch me. Oh, God, come and kill me. Some of you don't know that's why God had to take away Elijah. He still had assignments to do, but he told God, I'm not doing again. I don't want. I'll finish. And God said, okay, this anointing you have, God divided it and gave three people. I said, those three people will continue. Imagine what one person was doing. It's what God shared for three people. Okay. And that's how Elisha came on board. That's how Jehu came on board. And who was the last person? Was he I can't remember. Okay. Now, point is, when Elijah was complaining and saying, God, I'm the only one left, God told him something. God said, I have reserved... 7,000 people, 7,000 of my prophets who have not bowed their knees to Baal and who haven't kissed the feet of Baal. I have reserved for myself 7,000. Listen to me. This is what I tell people every time they think that there are no good men out there and there are no good women out there. I tell them God has reserved for himself several of his choice children who have not compromised their faith and who are holding on to him strongly for that thing which he has promised. You need to know that. And when you know that, then it will help you believe that your own is among those ones. Let that encourage you today. Let me read the way Apostle Paul described it in the book of Romans. He said, um, Romans chapter 11, let me read from verse 2 to 6, from the message version. Because I want to emphasize verse, um, verse 5 and 6, the way it was put there. Now, it says, Do you remember that time Elijah was agonizing over the same Israel and he cried out in prayer? He said, God, they have murdered your prophets. They trashed your altars. I am the only one left and now they are after me. He says, Do you remember God's answer? God said to him, I still have 7,000 who haven't quit. 7,000 who are loyal to the finish. And then he went for that to say, this is the part I'm emphasizing. He says, it's the same today. There's a fiercely loyal minority still. There might not be many, but perhaps, probably more than you think. They are holding on, not because of what they think they are going to get out of it, but because they are convinced of God's grace and God's purpose in choosing them. If they were only thinking of their own immediate self-interest, then they would have left, you know, long ago. What is the emphasis? That there are still several others holding on. Stop that thinking that there are no good men out there. If you like, if you are 45, there are good men out there. 
If you are 50 as a lady, there are good men out there. If you are, if you are um, 50 as a man needing a wife, there are good women out there. You say, oh, I'm already getting to 40. I've not seen husband. There are good men out there. God has reserved several more than you know. He has reserved them out there. Don't be discouraged. Don't give up. Don't join the narrative of everybody out there yeah, are all fools. So everybody out there is a crazy person. Everybody, I'm the only sane person in the world. Every other person is crazy. No, don't join that narrative. God has, he has, he has, I call them choice children. He has his choice children still preserved in the world. You need to know it. You need to know it. God has choice children out there. He can give you your spouse from any one of them. Please trust God to bring your spouse to you. Trust God to lead you to your spouse. Okay, trust him in this. He can do it. He does it all the time. He's been doing it. He can do it again. God brought Eve to, to Adam. Okay, he didn't tell Adam to, to run around and try to find himself a woman. In fact, he made all the animals pass by Adam. And Adam did not see his wife. And then God said, hold on. And then God formed her and brought to him. God can give you your spouse. The Bible says houses and wealth are from parents. It says, but a prudent wife is from the Lord. A prudent wife is from the Lord. That's in the book of Proverbs chapter 19 verse 14. A prudent wife is from the Lord. God can bring your wife to you. When Abraham was going to find a wife for his son Isaac, he told Eliezer his servant, he said, go to my people. He gave him these specifications. Marry among my people. He said, I don't want an alien culture. I want people who have the same faith with me. He said, go there and get me a wife. Eliezer prayed a prayer. He said, God, when I go there, all right, let me find a lady who will do this, 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 that. When he went there and he found her, immediately he said, see, this is what I prayed for. And God has answered it. Please let me return with her to my master who sent me on this errand. Some of you, you have seen what you are looking for, but you are waiting for all the I's and all the T's to be crossed. You are just waiting for what I don't know again. Listen, you need to learn to act in faith. When God has shown you somebody, when God has brought someone on your path, you need to stand up and start that walk of faith with that person. There is nobody who is going to be 100% everything you want. No, but... You can walk together and build together the kind of marriage that you desire. Some of you are waiting to see all the signs at once. You would not see all the signs at once. As a matter of fact, there are certain qualities you want that you would only find out later on. Let me even say this in closing, okay? There are certain qualities that you want in a spouse. You may not see them in the person that God is laying in your heart to get married to. But because you obey and you stay there, along the line, you'll find those qualities playing out. I had a, a man of God in Nigeria share this story. It was about his own marriage. He was hoping to get married to someone who is in the healing ministry. Okay, but there's a particular lady God had placed in his heart and said, marry her. But she was not in the healing ministry. She was not even looking like somebody that would do healing ministry. And he said, no, God, this one is not the type I want. Long and short is he did not get married to her, he got married to somebody else. Many years down the line, they were in the plane and this person was also with him in the business class and they're discussing, oh, where are you going to? And she says, I'm going to UK for a healing conference. Oh, wow, a healing conference? Who is the guest minister there? And she says, oh, no, it's my program. I'm organizing a healing meeting. And it dawned on him that, oh, wow. Oh, wow. So if I had married her then, somewhere down the line, she was still going to get into the ministry and she would have been complimenting me right now. You see, there are several stories like that I can share. Many of the things you think you're looking for, you might not see them now. And this word is for somebody. You might not see all of those things now. But if the fundamentals are there, he has a heart that loves the Lord and is committed to God. And he loves you. He shows it to you. Please look no further. Hold him strong. She has the qualities that, that I mean, she has a heart that loves the Lord. And, and she's committed to you, committed to, you know, to your relationship. Look no further. She might not be the complexion you want. She might not be the height. You know, she might not be, have all the things you want. But please hold her strong. Why? Because along the line, you will find why the wisdom of God brought her to you. You will find it out by yourself. Okay? So take note. You might not see everything you're looking for. That speck that you say must be 100 percent you might not find it yet. But somewhere into the marriage, you will begin to appreciate that person. Because you will begin to see those things you desired and even other things you did not remember to desire. 
you would also see them there. So let God lead you because he knows what's best for you. Somebody listening to me right now, after this session, you are going to say yes to that guy. Somebody listening to me right now, after this session, you're going to ask her out and you're going to stay in that relationship and it's going to work for you. Okay, I will stop there for now because of my time, but please let these words sink. Okay, if you want to hear it again, please watch the replay on our, on our um, Instagram handle and then it will later this week it will be uploaded on YouTube. Go and watch it again and again. All right, there's a question there. Let me see if I can take it very quickly before I move on. Next week is for our question and answer, so please don't miss it. Okay, someone says, Should I stay with my boyfriend when he is not what I want? He's God fearing, but he's not in line of, of God. Um, I'm not sure I understand that, but he's saying with time he will adjust and he's actually trying, okay? Now, if you can attest that he's actually making the effort to love the Lord and to grow in the things of God, all right? That is a good potential. That is something to watch out for, all right? Um, if you are seeing that commitment there, then please consider it give him a chance okay but there's a whole lot more we can talk about but if you see that genuine commitment to god and to the things of god then that is a good thing okay genuine commitment not the one they do because of you not the one that to make you happy so yeah let us go to church today <laughs> no but a, a personal commitment a heart that is desirous of the things of god to grow in the things of god if you find that then you don't have to leave him stay there and give him time with time, he will become the kind of person that you have been praying for. All right? So, with the information I have right now, you don't have to leave him if he's discommitted to the things of God. All right? So, I'll stop here for now. And if um, there are other questions, please feel free to send them in. We'll treat them in our session next week, which will be the last session for the year. Okay? Um, Christmas is on Sunday. I wish you a very Merry Christmas. And um, enjoy yourself. Enjoy yourself. You know, celebrate bless other people don't eat alone wait what am i saying he smokes and drinks haba but i can't marry because of that but he's trying to grow in every aspect that i've seen it okay well if you want us to engage for that please drop me a message on the dm after this session perhaps we can talk more about it because there are certain things that are concerns okay um but if he is making the effort to know god better to change his ways um, it may be something good, all right? So please, I think we should engage for that. So please just come and come, let's chat, all right? <laughs> Hello, Akemi, I see you. <laughs> all right, so thank you all. God bless you guys. Have a wonderful Merry Christmas. Enjoy yourself, take pictures, share with us. If our sessions have been a blessing to you, please do well to drop us a feedback. I want, I want people to share. Okay, don't just say, oh, thank you. It was a very nice session. Share in what area it has been a blessing to you because we want to start um, um, publicizing some of the things. By God's grace, next year we'll go all out, you know, and let the world know a lot of what we're doing. All right. So, um, Ugo, Ugo, we should discuss. Ugo, we need to discuss. All right. This question that you're posting there now, chat me up. Let us discuss. In fact, it's a very important conversation. All right. God bless you guys. I got to go now. Have a wonderful rest of the day, rest of the evening, and Merry Christmas again. And I wish you um, the best of the season. God bless you.